testing for COVID-19. That's what we're going to talk about in Science in 5 today. Hello, I'm Vismita Gupta-Smith, and this is WHO's Conversations in Science. We are talking to Dr. Hanan Balki today, who's going to explain testing for COVID-19. Welcome, Hanan. Thank you very much, Vismita. It's a pleasure to be with you today. Hanan, there are many kinds of tests that are available to the public. When, we, when a person decides, I think I need testing, can you explain what are the different kinds of tests available to them and how they should choose? Thank you, Vismita. Yes, this indeed is one of the most popular questions. So there are three categories of testing, uh, if I would want to simplify them. The first one is to identify whether uh, the actual COVID virus genetic material exists, and that's called a NAT test, N-A-A-T. And it's the PCR testing where um, you would have a nasopharyngeal swab or a pharyngeal swab taken, and then they look for the genetic material of the virus itself. The second type of testing is when uh, they try to identify one of the outer proteins of the viral shell or envelope, if you will, and that's called an antigen testing. So they try to detect the outer protein of the virus. And the third type is to detect within the human body whether they've developed antibodies. So it looks for antibodies that are specific to the outer portion of the virus itself. So it shows whether the, the individual has mounted an immune response or developed immunity towards that specific uh, virus or to COVID. So those are the three big categories of uh, testing that exist. Hanan, we hear the terms antigens and antibodies a lot. Could you please explain that in layman's terms? Very simply, Vismita, the antigens are the proteins that exist on the outer shell of the virus itself, so it's part of the, the virus itself. Antibodies are produced by the human body uh, against those specific antigens. So that's the simple way of, of uh, understanding the, the two. Hanan, speak to us about the accuracies of these tests and also about the kinds of tests we can expect in the future. The PCR testing, which is the NAT testing or that tests the nucleic acid of the virus itself, are the most sensitive ones. And those uh, actually to complete the testing process, they need to be uh, done in a quite a sophisticated laboratory setting. And that's why the turnaround time for these tests can take several days. And if there's an outbreak and there's lots of samples, it will take several days, uh, longer than what we would want to or hope for. The antigen testing uh, that exists now um, in the market are the what we call the antigen rapid diagnostic tests. Those look for the antigen on the outer surface of the uh, of the virus itself, and those have been developed in a way that they can be done um, at the bedside or in the field, so they do not need the sophisticated laboratory setting to conduct them. Um, they are not as accurate as the PCR testing, but they have a very important value um, as one of the tools um, to uh, address the COVID uh, pandemic. Hanan, speak to us about the value of getting tested. There are several aspects of that. The first one is to identify whether a person has the disease or not, and that's important to be able to provide uh, therapy, treatment, but also to um, specify who do we need to go and test further of the contacts of that specific person. So that's a, a big value to address the pandemic. When we talk about um, the value of the antibody testing, they become very important to know whether the person was exposed in the past. And when you hear about uh, understanding the immunity of the population, if you will, that is done through antibody testing. There you have it, WHO's Dr. Hanan Balki explaining COVID-19 testing. If you found this information useful, please share it with your networks and be the source of trusted, evidence-based information. Until next time then, stay safe, stay healthy, and stick with science.